Experimentation is the second theme of the intrapreneur. It is designed to answer just one question. As we consider a new venture, developing a new innovative idea, what would be the cheapest, fastest, least risky way to check whether this new venture is worth the investment, is worth implementing? In the same way that you can't learn without making mistakes, you can't experiment without occasionally failing, and we'll get back to the definition of failing in this case. However, the goal is not just to fail fast as the saying goes, but here the goal is to fail fast in order to learn fast. In this theme, we're going to look at three topics, how to finance experimentation, how to set objectives and check results of experiments, and then how to execute experiments. Experimenting is not free. It requires some resources. It's not something you can start doing over lunch, bouncing ideas, trying stuff, and expect that you're going to build a real sustainable capability. It requires an investment. If you are working in a typical company, whether you are managing a budget or involved with a budget, chances are you have two types of budget, projects and operations. So the question is, where does experiments funding fit in there? Well, first we have to understand that experiments are different from both projects and operations in terms of way of working and in terms of how to assess performances. It will, it will be very tempting to believe that experiments is just a type of project. After all, you have maybe IT projects, business projects, compliance projects, and so on. And why not experiments project? But it would be like trying to compare apples and oranges. It just doesn't work. The rhythm is not the same, for example, in terms of the time it takes to deliver, the velocity of decision making, the way to assess success not the same. In conclusion, we have to allocate specific funding for experimentation. And one way of doing that is to take 2 to 5% which most organizations do, from a project budget to allocate it to experiments. Why from the project budget? Because usually they share similar resources in terms of people who is going to work on experiments and uh, equipment, hardware, and so on. This venture portfolio is matched very different from a project portfolio. It's a bit like as an agile leader, as an entrepreneur, you are managing an incubator of startups. Let's say you have 10 ventures. Maybe one of them will be wildly successful like a star. Maybe one or two will kind of break even. And uh, seven, eight others out of these 10 will not give birth to any innovative or new solution. So you can't look at the success in terms of each experiment separately. You have to look at the success at the portfolio level knowing that in order for this one wonderful success that makes everything worth it to happen, we have to build on the learnings from those who didn't succeed this way. So there is no shortcut. We evaluate the performance of the venture portfolio to reflect, of course, what are the objectives of entrepreneurship and innovation in the organization. And typically there are at least two, if not three. The first one is having experiments that succeed and give birth to actual solutions. The second one is learning, which is key also to achieve the first one. And learning is of course not an ROI type of, of KPI, but it can and has to be measured. There are some techniques, for example, like innovation accounting. And third, often one reason to develop entrepreneurship and innovation is also to engage workers. The goal of experiments is to validate or invalidate the value hypothesis. The value hypothesis is something that has been formulated to express what is the value we expect to derive from a solution that is not yet implemented. Let's start with a clear, concrete example. 
in the public transport industry, there's a recurring problem of having incidents in the metro. And then, despite the metro being delayed or even stopped, people continue flooding into the metro stations. One idea is to install a service status display at the entrance of each metro station so that people can see when they arrive at the metro whether it is uh, disturbed or not and react accordingly. Of course, as you can imagine, implementing such a solution is very expensive and we actually don't know to what extent people will find it useful. So we'll like to find a way to test this value hypothesis fast, cheap, and without generating any risk. An experiment is designed with typically one or more testable hypothesis, something we can test because the value hypothesis I showed you cannot be tested beforehand. The only way to test it is to implement everything. One testable hypothesis that we could, we could uh, experiment is this one. We're going to install a non-electronic board for service status for the metro in front of three metro stations during one month. And when there is an incident affecting these metro stations, we're going to survey at least 50 people with one question, whether this display was useful or not to them. We consider this hypothesis validated if at least 60% of respondents answer yes and invalidated in all other cases. And look at the way we measure. We're going to ask actual users a feedback. We're also going to use a real prototype. It's not an analysis, it's not a document, it's not a question asked over the phone. It's something they can experience for real. The way to define the success of an experiment is also quite different from a project. Whether we validate or invalidate the hypothesis, it's a success. Why? Because if we validate it, with a promising experiment that might become a product or whatever it's supposed to become and generate value at scale. And if we answer no, it's invalidated, not only we learn something, but also we potentially avoid to invest in something that will not yield the expected benefits. The only way to fail an experiment is if we don't know the answer. Here, the role of the agile leader and the entrepreneur is not only to bring these practices, but more importantly, to change the culture toward what is a failure and what is not. We have seen that financing experiments and the way to set objectives, to design them, to assess the result is quite different from other types of initiatives like projects. The way to execute them is also quite different. And here, everything is done in terms of enforcing the bite-sized nature of experiment in terms of budget, time, people involved to enforce the high velocity of experiment. So the key word here is the box. And we have four types of box. We have the budget box, the time box, the team box, and the location box. The budget box is as the name implies. When we start an experiment, we have a fixed amount of money, of resources to do it. There will not be one more dollar. If we cannot do it within this budget, then we just don't do it at all. We have to split it into smaller experiments. The time box. Speed is of the essence when experimenting. So we set up a maximum time, for example, two months. Then there is a team box. Why the team box? Because one potential pitfall when doing experiments is that in many companies, large companies in particular, we're trying to set up a team of people who are highly specialized in different areas to do the experiment. And then we end up with like 10 people putting each a few hours of time and there is no real collaboration and no real accountability. So we'd rather have a few dedicated people and fourth, location. Location is something that helps to people, people to collaborate spontaneously. We want to avoid that people are like in different buildings and meet only here and there. Why not try to have a virtual or physical meeting room? It's like a lab or like a war room where it helps people to naturally collaborate. So these four types of boxes 
work together to make the experiment a very different type of experience and different types of way of working. Another important point is the autonomy. The team for the experiment has to be autonomous. They are the experts. Yes, there are managers and leaders and so on, but these hierarchy is there to support them, give orientation, and not to control them or direct them. And third point, partners. It's very easy to think that we got everything inside the organization, even if it's a large organization. But actually, it's very useful to think about, okay, but we never did that before. Can we involve someone else? Can we involve a startup outside of the company? Can we look at research? Can we involve some academics to maybe shake things a bit or, or, or question challenge ourselves?